Alright, hello everyone, welcome to our lesson for today, um, smell, taste, and touch. So here are our objectives and standards, to analyze how the senses of smell, taste, and touch, touch function, and recognize how our bodies react to pain. Take a moment there to look over the uh, standards. And our design result, how do smell, taste, and touch function? So the sense of smell. Both smell and taste um, are known as the chemical senses because the receptors are sensitive to chemical molecules instead of light or sound, such as with our vision and hearing. They're more sensitive to light and sound, where our sense of taste and smell, uh, they're more reactant to chemical senses. In order to smell, the gaseous molecules must come into contact with the smell receptors in your nose. I'm going to show you uh, an image of that in a minute. Molecules that enter the nose in vapors that then reach a special membrane in the upper part of the nasal passages where small, oh, I'm sorry, where smell receptors are located. Receptors then send messages through the olfactory nerve to the brain. So here's the process of smelling here. It says we can detect around 10,000 odors, uh, but how we tell one from the other is still unknown. Scientists think that we may have different receptors that light up in various combinations in response to the sense. Um, so you can see that uh, how the smell goes in our nose and then that olfactory membrane, you can see it there, how the odor hits the receptors and then goes through the, to the olf uh, olfactory nerve. And most of what we call flavors actually comes from the odors that reaches nerves via na nasal passages in the back of the throat. So um, when you taste a chocolate bar, you're actually, um, the reason you're tasting chocolate is because you smell the chocolate and then your body kind of registers that. Or when you, you know, taste vanilla, um, you smell vanilla and then your body recognizes that as, as vanilla. So it's not really a taste, but our, our, we, we, we smell it and we understand what the flavor is. <laughs> Now, aging in the sense of smell. People after age 50 may see their ability to smell begin to decrease. Uh, membranes that line the nose become thinner and drier, and nerves that are involved in smell also begin to deteriorate. Now, they can still so smell strong odors, such as possibly a skunk, <laughs> but less stronger ones may be harder to detect. Now, taste. The combination of taste, smell, and tactile sensations is known as flavor. So information in regards to taste is relayed to the brain, including texture and temptation of the item, hot and cold. Um, there are four primary sensory experiences that make up taste, bitter, salty, sour, and sweet. And you can see um, that people detect flower, uh, fla flowers, <laughs> flavors through their taste buds seen on the image here. And that's kind of, if you're looking at the tip of the tongue there where sweet is, that would be the tip of your tongue and then going towards the back of your throat. But that's where scientists believe our taste buds are located um, on our tongue. Um, now, some people may have greater sensitivity to certain tastes other than, other than others. For example, maybe you taste bitter things stronger than maybe you know somebody else, or maybe you taste salty things better than somebody else. Um, but again, um, a lot of our sense of taste is determined by our sense of smell. <laughs> so let's talk about taste and aging. So the number of taste uh, buds also decrease as we age. Ones that are left uh, also become less sensitive. So while we can taste salty things when we're young, as we become older, it may become difficult to taste something salty or sweet. Uh, changes tend to reduce uh, the ability to taste sweet and salt more than sour, bitter, and foods may also begin to taste bitter. So that's why some older people, um, the food may not taste the same. Um, they might say, oh, that, that tastes weird, or that tastes bitter um, because of this. Since smell and taste begin to decrease with age, foods may also begin to taste bland. Um, again, like I said, that's why older people may say something doesn't taste the same as it used to um, when they had it many, many years ago. Uh, older people may also tend to eat less foods since foods do not taste the same. Um, they can also take drugs that cause them to have dry mouth. So the combination of prescription medication and also just you know the decrease in the sense of smell and taste, um, this can create nutrition problems for adults, uh, for older people. And that's why many uh, older adults tend to eat less food because food doesn't taste the same. <laughs> Uh, 
other animals and their sense of smell. Compared to other animals, human sense of smell is relatively unimportant in everyday life. So even though we think our sense of smell is important, you have to think about things like insects that use their sense of smell to communicate with each other. So they use that to actually, you know, communicate messages. Um, humans typically only use smell for uh, pleasure, for eating and things like that. So in the big picture of things, um, you know, the sense of smell, you know, might be um it's not not that it's unimportant but just so that you understand that it may be um compared to other um senses and how it um compares skin and the sense of touch contained in the skin are receptors that are responsible for four kinds of information um, there may be different spots on the skin uh, that have sensitivity. Uh, for example, uh, we'll get into what those four types of information are too. Um, for example, on the fingertips, there's a large amount of receptors, so your body is highly sensitive to that. So, for example, if you prick your finger, you get a cut on the tip of your finger, it hurts a little bit more. Um, but the middle of the back and the back of the calf, there's a small amount of receptors. So, you know, you might, you know, you know, when you when you push on your calf, if you can, uh, you know, you, you can feel a little bit of pressure, but it's not as bad as if you, you know, slice your finger. <laughs> and real quick, I'm not I'm not telling you to go slice your finger. Don't do that. <laughs> um, pressure, pain, and sensitivity. The use of pressure sensations can be used for protection. So let's take a look at this pic uh, picture here, because these are the four types of receptors uh, in the skin. We have cold receptors, which is the green color there. Um, heat receptors, which is yellow, pressure receptors, which is like that blue purple color, and then pain receptors, which are red. So the you can see the hair there. So a picture that's like uh, your uh, uh, hair on your body or on your arm. Um, and then you have the first layer, layer of skin, and the second layer of skin. Um, so my belief is, as I was thinking about this earlier too, is maybe when we pull our hair out of our arm or out of our head, you know, we have that pain receptor which goes right through that hair right there that hair root if you can see that let me circle it here you can see that we have a pain receptor that goes right through the hair so that's why when we pull our hair sometimes or would pull our arm hair it hurts so much uh, the use of pressure sensations can be used for protection uh, receptors in the skin can also be sensitive to hot or cold temperatures um, there are also many kinds of stimuli, such as punctures, scratches, pressure, heat, and cold that, that can produce pain. A common thread between them is that they can produce real or potential damage to bodily tissues. Uh, through your prior experience with pain, it, uh, it is an emergency that requires immediate action. So exactly like I said earlier, like if you touch your finger or you, touch, you burn your finger on the stove or something like that, your body knows to, you know, because you know that hurts, you know you're supposed to take care of it right away. But again, this is the location of those four different types of receptors uh, in terms of touch, in terms of um, feeling and things like that. Feeling pain. In terms of other senses, um, pain relies on, um, in, I'm sorry, in terms of other senses, they rely on a single stimulus, for example, bright lights or a loud noise. However, pain de depends upon multiple different types of stimuli. Um, pain can be caused by different things. Could be intense lights, could be extreme noises, could be intense heat or cold. Um, but there are two types of pain in terms of sensation sharp localized pain that you feel right away after an injury for example like you know slicing your hand or cutting your hand or cutting your finger or something like that and then dull generalized pain you feel later on so maybe you you know i don't know you're playing soccer or something like that and you fall down and you you know you land in your ankle funny and you go ooh, that hurt but you know you, you can get up and walk on it, and then when you get home later that night your ankle begins to swell up and you can't put pressure on it it really hurts so that would be the pain that you feel later on Theories of pain. We can f we can uh, lessen our pain by shifting our ten our attention uh, away from the pain impulses by sending signal or by sending signals to other parts that compete with. For example, if you stub your toe, you might rub your toe, and that's you know you you think you're taking the pain away, and it does. It helps. You know, it makes us feel better by rubbing our toe. We're not really eliminating the pain, but we're decreasing the pain because we're causing um, our body and our brain to focus on 
something else, such as our rubbing our toe. So this is known as the gate control theory of pain, and it creates sort of a competition between non-pain and pain impulses. By increasing non-painful impulses, we can decrease pain impulses, and the sensation of pain is limited. Kinesis. So a sense of movement and body position is known as kinesis. Um, cooperating with the vestibular system, which we talked about balance and the sense of vision, it works to keep our posture in balance. Now this sensation comes from receptors in and near uh, the muscles, the tendons, and the joints. Um, what happens is when you're moving or walking or turning your head, um, receptors immediately send messages to the brain when any movement occurs. And for example, if we did not have this sense, uh, our movements would look very uncoordinated and very jerky looking, kind of, you know, like it look like we're kind of stumbling around. Um, and basic movements such as maybe, you know, walking or picking something up uh, could be impossible to complete. All right, so that's all I have for that lesson today. Please uh, try your best on the um, questions that follow and um, I'll talk to you soon.